heaven and earth will disappear, but my words remain forever. But no one knows the date now when the end will be, not even the angels. No, nor even God's Son. Only the Father knows. The world will be at ease, banquets and parties and weddings, just as it was in Noah's time before the sudden coming of the flood. People wouldn't believe what was going to happen until the flood actually arrived and took them all away. So shall my coming be. Two men will be working together in the fields, and one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be going about their household tasks. One will be taken, the other left. So be prepared, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Life was filled with guns and war, and everyone got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. Children died, the days grew cold. A piece of bread could buy a bag of gold. I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come. You've been left behind. Oh, the Holy Spirit is most certainly welcome in this place and really seems to be alive in this place and dwelling in this house right now. It's just, uh, do you feel it too? I just feel right now that something, something's changed. Something's, I put out a video there in March to say that something has changed in the world, like they'd cracked something or, or something had changed. And I just feel it again. I feel it on two levels. I just feel in the world, there's a lot going on in the world at the moment. And I just feel in my own personal life, I feel the Lord, the world just keeps calling me back and, there's so many distractions going on at the moment, just silly little things and just 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 things that are just returning me back to the world. And oh, the last couple of hours, I've just been doing worldly things because I just simply must. You've got to obey the laws of the land, you know, and all of these seductions that are just leading me back. And I can just feel it in my heart. I can feel it in my spirit that the Holy Spirit's changing my calling or, or he's really inviting me at the moment just to keep on track and keep steadfast and keep plowing on and, and, and just stay strong and, and stay strong in my faith with him. Now, I, I get three Bible verses a day. I've got three sources and it's really good the way it's worked out because I've got an old app on my phone and I wake up to that scripture every day. And then there's another one that comes through at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So it must be on New York time, maybe, because they're 14 hours behind us and 14 hours is 2 o'clock. And every day at 2 o'clock, it, it ticks over. And I get a third one. It seems to come through just before I go to bed. So how that works, I don't know. It just seems to change as I go to bed. But in any case, I've got the two I want to share today before I get into this video, which is going to be about... Who is Jesus? Because I, I, I've stopped doing that, haven't I? I, I I've done been doing videos on that, and I, I stopped, didn't I? And why? Why did I stop? Mm, it's interesting, isn't it? And this is how the Holy Spirit works. So, first of the day that come through, the what, 2 o'clock one yesterday come through, it's from Jeremiah 33, 2 and 3. Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Oh, yes. When I read that, when I read that, like I feel the Holy Spirit on me now as I read it, man. It's just like, yes, because th th this is what he's doing. He's showing me all these things, and the things I'm learning now about the sea and, and all that, and Yes, I did all that while I moved away from my Jesus videos because that's the way the Holy Spirit led me. And that's why I feel I stopped doing it. But get your ears around this one. This one comes through. This is the one that comes through as I went to bed last night. And it comes from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 2. Grace be with you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And I looked at it and I thought, okay, it's just a greeting from Paul. But with the Lord, you've just got to go, all right, let's just sit down and, and have a look at it. And I looked at it 
and I thought, let's have a real good look at this. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now remember I've been I've been doing videos about is Jesus God and, and all that and who is Jesus. And you can see here that Paul's saying, Grace be to you and peace, and he's saying it's from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's two it's two different things there. But straight away straight away this led me to a scripture that I first come into when I did a video, it's about four or five videos ago I think I did it. I'll put it up on the screen now, the, the, the video I actually did, but it, it, it took me back to a scripture that really hit me when I was reading through the New Testament last time. It was a, it was a couple of, it was probably about a month or so ago now. In any case, it took me back, it took me back to these scriptures in Philippians. Philippians 1, 22 to 24. And this is Paul. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what, what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful to you. So I look at that. I look at that and I think, you've got a choice in this. It seems like you've got a choice in this or somebody's made the decision for you because when you come back to this verse of the day, it says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's just been from them, hasn't he? Because we can't do that. I can't just say to you now and look at you and go, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't do that. Like I can encourage you to talk to him and, and find your own way to to connect with him and talk to him, but that's up to him. That's up to him to send that to you. And we all know Paul was set apart. He was set apart. He was the one apostle that that delivered the gospel in the in the New Testament and he seemingly just had perfect wisdom. He seemingly had perfect wisdom above everyone else. So he he it sounds to me like he's just come from them. And then when we go back to the scriptures in Philippines, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I what not. For I am in a strait betwixt two. So that says to me he's in a strait between living in the flesh and something else. Having a desire to depart. Depart where? Here we go with this word depart again. And to be with Christ, which is far better. So when he departs, he goes to Christ and he's got it. Looks like it, that's the choice, isn't it? To be in the flesh or to depart and be with Christ, which we all know is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful to you. So I've decided, says Paul, I'm going to stay here and abide in the flesh because it's more needful for you. So what's going on there? What is going on there? So does that mean does that mean he comes and goes from Jesus and God whenever he wants? Does that mean Philippians? Philippians was a church in the flesh and maybe some of these other churches weren't in the flesh. Just could it mean that? Because it's clear to me when they depart, they go through, I've been putting down in videos for a while now, it seems to me that they depart through these portals and they go to all these other spiritual dwellings and where's the land of Canaan today? What's an Israelite? What's a Jew? Where is the land of Canaan today? Where is it? Where was this land that they went to when they passed over the River Jordan to go to the other side? And Jesus went over the other side all the time when he was in his ships and that's where Paul went, didn't he? He kept departing and going over and coming to and went out and all this all this language in the New Testament on a ship. He was on a ship the whole time and now he's saying that he, he stands before the, the, the church of the Philippians that he would rather be he'd rather depart and be with Christ, but to be with them in the flesh is much more needful. So what oh what oh what does that mean? This is just 
this has just led me from this Bible verse of the day, Bible verse of the day that was in Ephesians, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, so now I'm like, all right, so the Lord now wants me to get back in. He wants me to get back in and start start trying to learn about who he is again. So that is my pleasure. What better the thing to work on than who is the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, yes. So let's have a look. So let's break down the scripture. So who is God? Who 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 is God in the New Testament in that in that G number that's used? So the G number is G two three one six, and it means a god or goddess, a general name of deities or divinity to the Godhead Trinity. I think that's the one he might be talking about. God the Father, the first person in the Trinity. Christ, the second person in the Trinity. Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity. So that's interesting, isn't it? They're people, but this is just the definition. It's not scripture. This is what the definition, this is the translation of that G number to what it means in, in, in Hebrew to English. And then we've come, we come into, the, there's, there's, a, there's annotations here that, that reminds me of Elohim. I think it's H413. That's just going on memory. But the, but, the, but the Elohim we see in Genesis 1 refers to the things of God, his counsels, interests to him, uh, whatever can in any way be like an under God or, or resemble him in any way, God's representative or vice regent of magistrate and judges. So there's there's some annotations there with Elohim with it. But when we come down and we have a look at some of the scriptures with it, I'll only touch on these briefly because I want to. I'm really conscious of time with my videos, or because they do get out sometimes because we go off into all sorts of different directions. But we'll just have a quick look at it. And because the first one really struck my eye, really, really got my attention was this first one. So Matthew one twenty three, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So Emmanuel, why did it change to Jesus? But his name Emmanuel, maybe I should put in that word uh, uh, Emmanuel. Let's do that now. So we can see it only appears the once here in Scripture in Matthew one twenty three, the Scripture we just spoke about, and it means God be with us, which is consistent with the Scripture, uh, and that means a title uh, applied to the Messiah, born of the Virgin. Isaiah, I think that is, 7.14, because Jesus was God, united with man, and showed that God was dwelling with man. And here we go again now. I just feel like now, I've, I, I, I feel compelled now to go to Isaiah 714. So let's go there now. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call and shall call his name Emmanuel. Dear, oh dear, oh dear me. Oh, how good are these holy scriptures? Look at this. This is just from that Bible verse of the day. And look what I've just learned. There is the Lord Jesus Christ right there in the Old Testament. There it is. Anybody who doesn't believe in the New Testament, they're kidding themselves. They're kidding themselves. These scriptures, these scriptures, if you walk with the Lord, if you walk with God, if you walk with Jesus, it is Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, man. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. This is this is just mammoth. I, I'm just loving this right now. I'm loving the things that I'm learning in this house. It's it's brilliant. And that, for those of you who are with me, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for putting up with me. And I just hope you're getting nourishment too. I'm loving the fellowship on this channel right now. It's brilliant. Let's have a look. Let's just recap. Let's just recap uh, what we learned a couple of videos there about the about the name Jesus. So you can see when we put in we, we put in the word Joshua into Blue Letter Bible, it comes up as Joshua and it also comes up as Jesus. Um, that's because they have the same meaning. Um, Joshua or Yehoshua. Now, is that what they call him? Some people call him Yeshua. And I got myself messed up with that for a while, um, you're trying to understand whether I should call him that or not. And maybe this is where they get it from. Because how, how do you say that? Because the, the, the Joshua is a Ye, isn't it? So ye o Is that how you say it? So Joshua would be Yoshua, I think, if you... Because there's something about the J. I think there's something about the J in the Hebrew over to English. There's something about the, the J, I think. But Joshua 
and Jesus mean the same thing. Jehovah is salvation. And when we go in and we have a look at the other time we see the word Joshua in in the Old Testament, we first hear of him in Numbers 13a of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia, the son of Nun. And that's that's Joshua. And we go in and we have a look at the word we go in and we have a look at the word Oshia, and that's the same that's the same Hebrew word as Hosea, uh, which means salvation. So um, Joshua means Jehovah is salvation, salvation. That's what Joshua means, and Jesus means salvation. So when we come in and we have a look at the word Christ, and we just type in the word Christ, we can see all of these meanings here and i won't go into them just yet we'll just start this video and see where we go so we see all of these different meanings here and the one which is actually christ is christos we can see here five five four seven and we we go in and we click that and we can see that it means christ which means anointed um, Christ was and is the messiah the son of god so jesus christ means Jehovah is salvation, anointed. And Joshua means Jehovah is salvation, salvation. So where I feel we should probably go now with this video is I think we should probably go and have a look at the word anointed. So it's just gone two o'clock here and the new Bible verse of the day has come through and it comes from the book of Psalms, 119, 130. I just had to share this. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. <laughs> oh, how good is that? How good is that? But the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. We're all pretty simple, aren't we, when it comes to the word of the Lord? Oh boy, oh boy, it's a wonderful time to be alive. It is indeed a wonderful time to be in the body of Christ. So when we come into the word anointed, I laugh because it becomes fairly obvious as to why the Lord God wants me looking into this. So we have a look at the word anointed and there's quite a few meanings here and I'm just going to keep it to just the one on this video because again, I'm I'm just conscious of time and you have a look at it, this one's anointed Messiah. So... Mashiach. That's the word the Jews, the, the imposters in Israel use, isn't it? We want Mashiach now, they say. This is their Messiah they talk about. This is interesting, isn't it? This is interesting. So let's go and have a look. Because remember, Jesus Christ, Christ means anointed. So let's go and have a look. Anointed, anointed one of the Messiah, Messianic Prince, the King of Israel, of the High Priest of Israel, of Cyrus, of the Patriarchs as anointed kings. So we can see all of the scriptures here. Um, this one, this first one's interesting, and all these ones in the law books really become a lot more interesting about just the sacrifices and stuff and you have a look at the first one leviticus 4 3 if the priest here we go with priest we're going to go there on this video i think if the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people then let him bring forth his sin which he hath sinned a young bullock without blemish unto the lord for a sin offering if the priest that is anointed so this is this is very very interesting now because this is this is making me talk about Melchizedek and I heard someone say that properly the other day and I can never do it I'm putting in one too many syllables but anyway I'll go away and practice it but I know I'm saying it wrong I, I apologize I'd love to be able to say it right but I just can't well I can but I just don't know how to do it because I'm all by myself but in any case, if the priest that is anointed, so the, the the priest that is anointed, now we are in a different, what was the term they used in Hebrews? The We're in a different type of priesthood now, I think, because of the law. We went out of the priesthood of the order. That's the word, the order of Melchizedek. And the, the, the order of the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one, is different. So... 
a couple of scriptures that really I, I, I went through, and there's a whole heap of them here, but again, time. But just a, just just one that just, wow, we that just leapt off the page at me and has really led me to just, just to go and learn something about another word that's been really on my mind in the Bible. And remember, I, I've, I've said since I was saved that it's part of your calling that whatever your passions you got in the Bible, whatever interests you in the Bible, whatever pricks your interest in the Bible, that's part of your calling. Because that's the Lord putting it in you. He created us all different. He created us all as individuals. That's why the world want everyone unified. That's why it's all about one and unification and humanity and all of this nonsense is because we were created different. And equality, that's another one. Equality just doesn't exist. Because the Lord God created us all different and we've all got a different walk with him. We've all got a different purpose with him. So uh, the, one, of, one of these words that have been coming into me is in this scripture, but I'll just get to the scripture. So it comes from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10. And these Samuel books are two books that I've never been able to understand. I don't get them. I don't get them, and I've read them a few times, and it frustrates me that I don't get them, but, but every day we get closer. But in any case, verse 10, The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall be thunder upon them. The, word, the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So... This one left off the page at me simply because it's got the word anointed and king. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king. It just puts David into a new context, doesn't it? This whole thing starts to put, put David now into a new context. And also the Lord Jesus Christ, because we clearly see he's right through the Old Testament. I'll demonstrate how more so in just a sec. And exalt the horn of his anointed. So... The horn of his anointed. So is his anointed a plural or is it one? What's a horn? So a horn something that's always in the Bible. It's always got my interest. And I thought I'd put it in the blue letter Bible and just have a bit of a look. So we have a look at it. It means horn of strength, flask, horn, horn of light projections at the altar, ray of light and hill. And we can see in here, horn as of an ox, a goat. So we're back into animals again. We're back into to, to all of these animals. But get your eyes around this one where we first see the word horn in the Old Testament. Look at this. Genesis 22, 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Oh, my goodness gracious me. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Oh, my goodness gracious me. I'm just, I, I, I seriously, I, I, I don't know what to think with that because I've been saying for a while that I feel that this ram is Jesus. And we now have a look. So remember, Jesus, Christ means anointed. So this ram is caught by the thicket of his horns. And we come back to 1 Samuel. And the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Abram, beholding a ram caught by the thicket of his horns. Whew, goodness gracious me. And then you come in and you have a look and it's all over the law books, this word horns. And thou shalt make horns of it upon the four corners thereof. So I think they're probably talking about the Ark of the Covenant here. The Ark of the Covenant, this takes me back to Joseph and his bones. And this is where the, the Lord of hosts or the Lord sits between the two cherubims upon the mercy seat of this Ark of the Covenant, which seems to me resemble the Garden of Eden. You come in and it's right through the law books. It's right through the law books. And here we go. We've got one in Joshua that I've just seen now. Here we go with Joshua again. Let's see what Joshua's got to say. And it shall come to pass that when we make the long blast with the ram's horn, goodness gracious me, and you shall hear the sound of the trumpet, 
And all the people shall shout with great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Oh, my goodness gracious me. I am positively pulsating. Here we go. We've got one with Solomon. And Solomon, and it was told Solomon, saying, Behold, our Dijana feareth King Solomon, and lo, he hath caught hold of the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me this day that he will not slay his servant with the sword. It's like you can just, I could potentially just keep going. Imagine all of the ones we're going to get out of Psalms here. Imagine all the talk we're going to get about on in the book of Psalms. So just to reiterate, this is this context of it here. So we're into the word anointed. We're looking at the word anointed because Christ means anointed. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. What does that mean? And he shall give strength unto his king. Who's his king? And exalt the horn of his anointed. And who's the anointed? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We're getting close to something huge here, my brothers and sisters, in this house. Now, this one. This one. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I, I, I Lamentations. So I did a video on Lamentations when I read through the Old Testament last. And Lamentations chapter 4 stopped me at the time. And it stopped me even again now. I'm just going to go and get my Bible. So just like that video I did in the car, right? So here, you can see these lines are over here. So you can see like that video there the other day, right? So this is Lamentations. This is Lamentations 4 here. And you can see here with the with the pencil lines there, their scriptures I've shared out of Lamentations 4 before. And you can see all these ones down here. All these scriptures in Lamentations 4 that I've shared before, right? Because it just caught my eye at the time. It's not puffing myself up. It's not puffing myself up. It's glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ and it's glorifying this mighty book because I'm here again. I'm just here again. I wasn't looking for it because as soon as I saw it, I've just gone, here we go again. And this is loaded. This is absolutely loaded. And I don't even know where to begin with. I'm going to have to go away and study it, I think. But I've just, I've highlighted a few things here that caught my interest. Verse 2, the, pre the precious sons of Zion comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the word of the hands of the potter? Now, when I read through Lamentations 4 this time, it is starting to become apparent to me. Now, this might be controversial to some of you, but I'm starting to pick up a theme here that there's men and beasts are both what we call people, and it looks as though you've got the three lineages, right? You've got Shem, Ham and you've got Japheth. They use this term, they use this term humanity to unify everyone, right? Human beings to unite everyone. And we've all heard of the elite bloodlines and the reptilians and all of this sort of stuff, right? Where they're not people. So people are open to that, but I think there could be another separation somehow. And I'm even starting to think that the, because the Bible's meant for us, right? It's, the Bible's meant for people who want truth, who are within the Lord. The Bible's not for all of these people out here who don't care, who only care about what football team won and how much they, how they're going to get more money, and they don't care about the truth. And you go and talk to them, you say the earth's flat to them, and they don't care, and they just laugh at you, right? The Bible is meant for people like us, the the the, uh, the anointed, I, I guess. We in the body of Christ. And Jesus said in the parables, that's why he speaks in parables, because it's not for them. And I saw a verse in Ezekiel this morning where Ezekiel says, he says to the Lord that he talks in parables. And the longer I go in the scriptures, it's starting to become, I don't know, to me too, Lord God. When we see Lord God in the Old Testament, it's Jesus. It's the same entity. But the, 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 the man that was formed in the garden it's starting to come to me that potentially that is the anointed, that is the the children of Israel, the the those of us in the body of Christ. Because I'll, I'll show you as we go down into these scriptures. But another one that that really hit me was was verse five that they did feed delicately as desolate in the streets that they were bought up in scarlet embrace. Dung hills. Now, I can't even begin to imagine what that means, but scarlet. There we are with scarlet. There's something about this scarlet thread. And 
the adventures of Judah in Genesis 38, which happened at the same time, just after these things that started around the, it was around the same time of Genesis 38 starts. It tells us it was just after these things, I think it said, and Judah went down from his brethren and his seed rolled over the ground and the Lord slew and it ended up being the scarlet thread which went to Jesus. So here we go again with this scarlet and Jesus and I just, it hits me. Verse 6, for the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown in, in as a moment and no hand stayed on her. So the greater the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom that was overthrown in a moment. So, oh, of the daughter of my people, the bride of Christ, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just going to read this all the way. I'm going to read this all the way to the end. So I didn't know quite know where to start with it, but we might just read the whole lot because this, this, is, this is amazing. This is incredible. Incredible. Verse 11, Lamentations 4. The Lord hath accompanied his fury, accomplished his fury. He hath poured out his fierce anger. He hath kindled a fire in Zion and hath devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world the kings of the earth, there's a separation there, is it there? The kings of the earth and all of the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates. Here we go, the gates again of Jerusalem. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just are in the midst of her. They are wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. This writing just reminds me of Paul. They cried unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean. Here we go, we go unclean again. Depart, depart, touch not. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the heathen, They shall no more sojourn there. The anger of the Lord hath divided them. He will no more regard them, that they respected not the persons of the priests. They favoured not the elders. For as for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help in our watching. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. They hunt our steps that we could not go out in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled for our end is come. Our per persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They lay wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed, this is where I, this is where I saw the word anointed, the anointed of, it, of the Lord was taken in their pits, of whom we said, under his shadow, we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz, so Uz is the Chaldees, I think that's where Job was. The cup shall also pass through unto thee, where Abram was taken from when the Lord took him from the other side of the flood. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. I'm going to highlight that because I didn't see that. Look at that. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Now, if you have a look, you know, you, you, I'm thinking now that the land of Canaan and the Garden of Eden is the same story. And the man that the Lord God formed from the dust of the ground is the children of Israel. I'm starting to believe that because you have a look at this, right? The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord. So it's a collective, the breath of our nostrils. So is this, this is Lamentations. So Lamentations is Jeremiah, who was a Benjamite for memory, the anointed of the Lord. So it's plural now. The anointed were the children of Israel. They were taken to their pits under the shadow. We will, li we will live among the heathen. So they've been kicked out of paradise, the land of Canaan. They've been kicked out after they received the breath from their nostrils, the, the anointed of the Lord. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cups of Uz is Chaldees, which is Babylon, shall, shall pass through unto thee, which is where the, the seed of Shem come from. 
The cup shall also pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and thou shalt make thyself naked. So they were naked and not ashamed in the, in the Garden of Eden. I don't know. I'm just constantly seen to be picking up this theme. I'm picking up this theme at the moment that, that, that it's all that it's all somehow connected. All of this is connected and it's telling the same story a different way or something. This is more to the children of Israel. And as you read through the New Testament, it just the, the, the separation, the Gentiles are the beasts. They're the four footed beasts that in the book of Acts that we read about that rise, Peter, kill and eat. And they were the things in the book of Leviticus that the Lord decried as unclean and you couldn't eat them. And eating's now starting to mean something completely different to me as well. As are the sacrifices. It's all it's all just starting to change and it's all it's really hard to get down my thoughts, but I feel like I've just put some significant ones down there and that's just how I'm feeling because I just feel like the, the Genesis Genesis 2.14 and the last two scriptures in Joshua, I think it's Joshua 3.16.17, I think it is. You go Genesis 2.15 and then those two in Joshua and then Genesis 2.15. To me, they just fit. They just absolutely fit like a glove to me. And now we've got this word anointed. And remember how we got there. The word Christ means anointed. And that's why we're looking at this word anointed. And now we've got here. So now I think when I look at verse 16, because I've been I've been on this channel for a long time, I've been talking about the word divided and the whole division thing in the Bible. And um, Eva, Eva means a region from beyond. And, and he had a son and the Peleg and his name mean um, earthquake, which was divided. And the earth was divided in that time. And he divided the waters in the ferment and divided the Red Sea. And there's just a vision. Um, Jacob, I think it's Genesis 32, he divided. And Abraham divided in, 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 in Genesis 14, that, that beautiful, beautiful chapter, Genesis 14, that's so important to me. And the Lord compelled me to do that video about it that day so I could understand it more. There's just a vision right through the Bible. So I look at, and, and also priests, I've been talking about priests, Melchizedek and... And Shem, so remember Shem means name and name means Shem. And in Jasher, in Jasher, it says that that Shem um, was was the same as that, that, that priest, that the priest of Jerusalem, the king of Jerusalem, the priest of the most high God in Joshua 10, that Joshua and the children of Israel smote Joshua the same. He's got the same meaning as the Lord Jesus Christ, his name. Um, that 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 he was Shem was the same as him, but in the scriptures it says it was Melchizedek, and then Melchizedek is in the order of the priesthood. And the Lord hath said, and he will not repent; he will make Jesus as the order of Melchizedek. So, for me, it seems quite apparent for me, and quite obvious place for me to go now, and have a look at the word priest as we try and understand a little bit more who the Lord Jesus Christ exactly is. Now, before we get into the word priest, I want to just quickly return to a couple of scriptures and thoughts that I put down there a minute ago. So just with the, just with the Garden of Eden thing, I forgot to mention just in verse 20 of Lamentations 4, under his shadow we shall live among the heathens. That's another thing that's, that's just making me think that the children of Israel were the man the Lord God had formed in 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 Genesis two, and then he he, he put the man he put the man in the in the Garden of Eden, Adam. It's really starting to it's really starting to fit to me that the children of Israel are that, and the the Gentiles are beasts, and and then we've got a, this this third lineage, which is the lineage of Ham which seems to be the modern day, well, back in the Bible, the Egyptians, so the lineage of Ham was the Egyptians. And uh, you look at the world today, and it's it's plainly obvious to, obvious to me that the pits of hell, we use these terms, don't we? The pits of hell is, is, is Switzerland. Switzerland run the world. They're the modern day Pharaoh. All you've got to do is take that Knights Templar shield, that, that cross they've got that, that's right through the Pope, that's right through the Vatican, that's right through the, the royal family, the aristocracy. You, you, you turn it up and you, 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 
you put it up and it's just it turns into a pyramid it's just you look straight over the top of it it's a pyramid that 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 knight's templar shield when you flatten it out it's just a pyramid so they they're the modern day pharaohs so they're the lineage of ham and what i'm trying to put out there with this is that they're not they're not like what we are and then the gentiles are beasts and then you've got the man which is the lineage of shem which is the the children of israel but then i've got a lot more to think about too because the lineage of shem at all they weren't all good were they because i know it was sure Ashua seemed to in Genesis 11, he seemed to be of the Tower of Babel and and, and and there was all sorts of iniquity in the house of Shem and, and they, they were they were worshipping their false gods, weren't they? The, or was it Terah, the, the, the father of Abraham? We learn about him in Joshua, the, 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 the sons, the, the fathers of Abraham. We learn about them in Joshua 24 too and that's where the Lord God took him out. He took Abraham out from the other side of the flood, the land of the Chaldees. And he said to get thy out of thy kindred and thy country in Genesis 12. And then Abraham departed. Abraham departed in Genesis 12, 4, didn't he? He departed out of there from the other side of the flood. And that's where he put the man into the land of Cain. And now is the man just the children of Israel? Was it Shem? Because then we've got all these links to Shem back to... Melchizedek, and then we've got the, the, the links of Melchizedek back to Jesus, haven't we, that I've just discussed on previous videos. So I'm really starting to think I'm in some serious truth here because it's just what the scriptures are telling me. I don't want the truth to be anything in particular. I just want it. I just want the truth. And I just feel as though the Lord, just in his grace, is revealing it to me when I just feel as though I'm, when he feels as though I'm ready for it. And, and I just feel at the moment, there's, I've been saying for a while, there's mass, something massive coming in here. And I pray for discernment every day with the Lord because I don't, I, I don't want to put things out here that are wrong. I don't want it at all. Not because I don't want to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong, but I don't want to give out false info. And I pray for it every day. So don't forget, don't forget, I am just a student. I'm no teacher. Somebody said I was preaching the other day. And that 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 was flattering, and I, I I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a student. I'm just a guy from the New South Wales Central Coast who lives in very very humble surroundings here, who's just trying to who's just trying to get to truth and just putting out just what I'm learning in the scriptures to anybody that that cares to listen but I, I i'm no teacher and if i'm in error I, I i the holy spirit will will point it out as he does to me as he does to me from time to time when it becomes apparent that i am in error another one i wanted to return to is just this scripture in isaiah because it's really reverberating with me this just just uh, i'm going to read just from isaiah 7 13 to 17 and he said here now a house of david is it a small thing for you to weary men but will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So therefore, therefore, so as a consequence of verse 13, he now, O God of Israel, our house of Israel, of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? So what, what, is it a small thing for you to weary men, O house of David? It's very, very interesting that. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that abhorreth shall be forsaken of both her kings. It's interesting, isn't it? Her, of both her kings. The land that thou abhorreth shall be forsaken of both her kings. And this is another thing that's really been like on my mind recently is that is the feminine, the female that we read about, and the is that representative somehow of the earth, of the flesh somehow? I just I don't know because you just think the land you see it here, and I'm not just saying that because I've read it here. 
reading it here has reminded me of something that I have been praying about and thinking about for a few weeks now. The land that thou abhorrest. So this is the house of David, I would assume still, from verse 13. The land that thou abhorrest, a house of David, shall be forsaken of both her kings. So the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of her kings, the land's kings, right? The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. So that's loaded. I just know that's loaded. Isaiah 7, 17 there, that's just loaded. And here we go again with Ephraim and Joseph. And something has been really bugging me the last for a while now. When I say bugging me, it just means I don't understand, right? So if I don't understand, um, it, it bugs me because I want to understand everything. I want to know all of this. I want to understand it, you know? So it's, it bugs me is, is just just Joseph's son. So they came from Egypt, didn't they? But 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 we 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 we, we might learn something in that with 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 this. So when we go in and we have a look at the word priest, we can see all of these meanings here. So there's there's four there's five in the Old Testament, and it looks like there's nine in the in the New. I'm not going to go into them all. I've just picked a few out that I feel could be the most interest, the most nourishment in this video because you know we do have time. You know, we do have time. Um, restraint. So we come into the first one, and this is the one that really interests me because we see it's got it's 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 of Melchizedek and Comat Messiah, isn't it? It's interesting, isn't it? So we've got priests slash priests dash king Melchizedek comma Messiah. So they're just it linked out though. Just Jesus and Melchizedek. There's just this. There's something going on here. There's something going on here that's far, far deeper in thoughts. Boy, oh boy, do I have thoughts right now about who I think Jesus could be. Like more, more about, we know he's the son of God. We know potentially that he is God. I think he is God. I think him and God are one. And I think right now he is Lord God in the Bible. But I think he's much, much more than that. And boy, do I have some thoughts about what that could be. But not yet, not yet. I'm just going to keep... Just, just keep going, keep reading, and keep up, re praying for discernment. But then we, and then I might put it out as I come into more truth. We come in here, we see the high priest, and also called the anointed priest. And we go back to these scriptures we shared a little bit earlier in Leviticus. So it's interesting, isn't it? We're back into anointed. So this is the anointed priest, and we come back up to the meaning, and we've got Messiah, Melchizedek. So this is priest, right? So we come down into a couple of scriptures here, and these are the ones that we see about Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. So this is the Messiah. This is this is it's linked with Messiah and anointed, and all it's all linking up and anointed. Jesus means anointed. Uh, Christ means anointed, and we've got Melchizedek now, the king of righteousness, and it's just it's unmistakably linked. Psalms 110 and all those scriptures in Hebrews, which we'll get to in a minute. But have a look at these next few about what I say before. And Pharaoh called jo Joseph's name, not even going to begin to try and date that. And he gave him to wife, Asenath, the daughter of the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. So I don't think it's a, it's a leap to assume that this priest, H3548, is the priest of Egypt. And th 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 this, is the, this is the wife that Pharaoh gave to Joseph. And Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine come, which Ashenath, the daughter of Pompera, priest of On, bare unto him. And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, which Asenath, the daughter of Pontivar, priest of On, bear unto him. So it's most interesting, isn't it? Because it looks like we've got the other priest of the land of Egypt. So is this their most high? Is this their anointed one? Are we allowed to use the word anointed when it comes to Egypt? You know what I mean? They use all these terms for evil. 
and it's looking like that Egypt's evil, isn't it? I think we've established that Egypt's evil. Why was Joseph there? Why did Joseph bear his two sons that had the promise, that had the blessing of Jacob? Why were they born in Egypt? And, and I don't know. Does this give us some clues? And Joseph made it law over all the land of Egypt unto this day that Pharaoh should give him, should have the fifth part except the land of the priests only, which became not Pharaoh's. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what all this means, but this is just punching in the word priest and we find out that's something new that I found out that I didn't know that before is that the wife of Joseph, who had Manasseh and Ephraim, the children of the promise of, of, of Jacob, which means the Lord God, were of the priest of Egypt, the high priest of Egypt. So it's very interesting that. And just one other meaning I wanted to put out there too is we've got priests, priests of Jehovah. So we've got Melchizedek, Messiah, priest of Jehovah, as well as these other ones, Aaronic priests. That's interesting too because that was a different order, I think, because Psalms 110 and Hebrews, and I think that tells us that it's a different order, um, the order of Jesus and Melchizedek to the um, Aaronic uh, order. I think that's how I'm interpreting it at the moment. Um, and then we come into the New Testament, and, and this is interesting too, because this one means um, Anaeus, Ananaeus, Ananaeus, who Jehovah has graciously given that means. So that's interesting. We're back into Jehovah, and Jehovah has graciously given this priest. So this priest, Ananaeus, Jehovah has graciously given them. And we come down into these, into these scriptures, and... We can see it's all in the book of Acts. But we've got Satan here, so Acts 5.3. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? I think I remember this now. So let's have a, let's have a bit more of a look at the story. So Acts 5.1. But a certain man that made Ananias with Sophia, his wife, sold a possession and kept back a part of that price his wife also being privy to it and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep part back at the price of our land, of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? That they have conceived this thing in thine heart, thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, and he gave up the ghost, and great fear come on all of them, all of these things. And I remember it happened to his wife too. They come in, and they, they, it happened to his wife as, as, as well. And this was the priest. This was the priest, and this is like the whole, they're, 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 they're lying to the Holy Ghost. And it takes me back to that scripture where the, the Son of Man, you can lie to the son of man the, the, the one in luke i shared in that video the other day in the car and but you can't lie to the holy ghost it just resonates with me there very interesting but we've got to keep moving and the next one the next one we see here is uh, it means a priest one who offers sacrifices and in general and in busy with sacred rites referring to priests of, of of gentiles or the jews so that one, that, that, that interests me. So we've got Gentiles and Jews. So is that beasts and, and man? I don't know. That's where I'm going. Uh, a metaphor of Christians because purified by the blood of Christ and brought into close intercourse with God, they devote their life to him alone and to Christ. Hallelujah. That is me right now. And God willing for the rest of my life. And we come down, and this one here caught my interest in Acts, of course. Naturally, naturally, it's in Acts. But this one here. The, 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 then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, bought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. So this one's just really, really hitting me because I'm believing the gates are some sort of different spiritual place, perhaps a portal. And now we're talking about the priest of Jupiter. And I can't imagine that's the priest of the Most High. It's a different meaning we've got going on here. And they bought oxen. We can, here we go again with the tillers of the crown. The oxen unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. So who are the people? Who are the people here? 
And then we come into Melchizedek. All of these scriptures that we've been talking about before, now we come into Melchizedek. And we come back into the meaning of this one, and it means these things here. Priest, one who offers sacri uh, sacrifices, and in general are busy with sacred rites. So this does this take us back somehow to the to the Le Levitical books, the, the book of Leviticus and the law? I, I, I don't know. I just know... In these scriptures now, because we're getting into Hebrews, that uh, yes, I'm weighing over my depth because I'm just a student and I'm trying to understand this. But this this priesthood and the Book of Hebrews and the links back to Jesus and Mount Chesedisac, it's blowing my mind. And I just knew we'd arrive here again as I was trying to learn more about who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And then we come down here, and it's through Hebrews, and we see it in Revelation. Um, and has made us unto our gods, kings, and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Sounds good, doesn't it? Blessed and holy is he that hath the part of the first resurrection, on such that the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Goodness gracious me. Goodness gracious me, the second death hath no power. What is the second death? I didn't know that. I thought there was a first one, but I didn't know there was a second death. I wonder what that's all about. Do I need to go and have a look at that? And the last one I'm going to share today on this video, and we'll leave this video here after this. It's just this one. It's most, most interesting. So it's John. So John... Now, this is when you put in the word priest, so it, come, it translates out as John, Jehovah, is a gracious giver. Now, that reminds me of that previous one we had, Ananias, the one that was killed, the priest that was killed, Ananias, whom Jehovah has graciously given. And, and Ananias was killed because he withheld land from the Holy Ghost, and so was his wife. So that's... That's interesting, but then you have a look, you come back into this one and you have a look and there's another one. It looks like there's another Aeneas in Acts 9. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Any of the Ananias has come back. Is this talking about the first death and the resurrection? It's hard to know, isn't it? So the book of Acts is just so profound. It's so profound and it looks like there's, there's scriptures here about Saul and visions and no doubt departing and going across to the other side. and So we come back into this one. Jehovah is the gracious giver. So they they basically, they mean the same thing. They're very, very close. But it's all John. So it's essentially every time we see the word John in the New Testament. So it looks like it's the same John that wrote the book of John and the book of Revelation. John the Baptist and the the it was the disciple the apostle john in the book of acts the same as the as any of them i'm not sure of this but john the baptist died didn't he his head was served up on a platter i think in the book of matthew but all of these scriptures here about all of those johns is also about the priest so it looks like john was a priest as well and john the baptist was the one that paved the way for the lord jesus christ to come and then we read all about it again in Acts. And then we come into Revelation. And it's John again. So this is priest. So John was this priest as well. So, oh boy, oh boy. So it's hard to know. My head is full. My heart is full. Um, it's really hard to know what to make of all this. But I've learned a lot. I've learned so, so much in this video. And it's, it's you, you think about all the things that we've, we, we've spoken about in it and where we've gone. And the word Christ means anointed and the Lord Jesus Christ and Melchizedek, we're back into that again. And Isaiah, you remember the, the, the scriptures there in Isaiah and it's just, it's, 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 all of this, all of this just from a scripture the Lord God put into me about Ephesians where where Paul was greeting the church of Ephesians and and then that took me back to the scriptures in the Phil in, in the Philippians and I don't know it just to me it's just uh, the, these these books so uh, I just feel 
that there's a real difference in the Old Testament to the New Testament, and then there's another difference to now. I think it's undeniable, and because just the way they communicated with the Lord and how the Lord in the New Testament just appeared to them in visions. He just appeared to me. He doesn't do it here. I don't look outside and he just appears to me in a vision. I've got to try and discern his voice. And it's all now of the Holy Ghost, isn't it? It's all now of the Holy Ghost and the goodness of the Holy Ghost and how he speaks to us. He speaks to me most definitely in technology, through technology, through the scriptures, in my heart and in my dreams. He And he puts things into my head. He puts thoughts into my head and just thoughts that because if you think something, how did it get there? Well, how did that thought get there? And I look back at my whole life and it's just been a war. It's just been a war between the Lord and Satan. But God hasn't been trying that much because God's been letting me go. He wasn't ready to bring me in. So Satan was ruling my life. And I, I had the demons, you know. I had the alcohol demon and all sorts of demons in me. And there was just this war my whole life. And that's how the Lord talks to me now. That's how Jesus talks to me now. But you look at the Old Testament, and particularly in the first two verses of Judges, and they were just talking to God directly. It was just, and God appeared to Moses on Mount Sinai. And, 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 and the Lord God spoke to Adam in the garden, where art thou? And he spoke to Cain directly. He, speaks to the, he spoke to them directly. And then the Holy Ghost presented to these apostles in the book of Acts, in visions, and it just doesn't happen now. I, to my knowledge, it doesn't happen. I mean, if it is happening to people, I'm not aware of it. It's certainly not happening to me. And there's just, in the book of Acts, it's just but, but beyond, in Hebrews, it's just beyond my comprehension with how profound it is. And as I keep going, these gates, these gates are just representing these portals, and Paul in Philippians, it seems to me that Paul just had a choice. He had a choice of where he was. And he, he can't just go, like, if he wanted to be with Christ, how would he do it? So how does Paul get to Christ? And he's obviously just come from them because he says greetings from the Lord God and and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So how does he... I don't know. I, 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 I just... I, I, I don't know, but, but, but here we are. So... It's, it's hard to know what to make of it all, but I have learned lots and lots and lots, and I feel as though I am a lot closer now to knowing who the Lord Jesus Christ is exactly, and thoughts, boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I have thoughts. I have a million and one of them, but not yet. I'm not going to put them out That's just yet. As usual, let me know what you think. I'd love to know what you think, um, good, bad, or indifferent. Let's have a little good talk about this. Uh, because all we want in this land, in this channel, is the truth and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to He goes all the power and all the glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, the King. There's no time to change your mind, the sun has come.